Sometimes when you use Visual Studio, like when you download a project, or you get it from your friend, or you get it from me, you see the include over here has a red line underneath. And it says standard input output .h cannot be found. When you get something like that, it means the version of the Visual Studio in which the project was created is different with yours. And because the target of the framework that is using for the target, they are different, it cannot find uh, the Visual Studio related to that. So you have to retarget Visual Studio. How you do it? You simply right click on uh, the name of the project and go retarget target project. You can select any of these over here, anything. If it's only one, fine. Do not say no upgrade. Just click over there and click OK. And you do that, and it's going to upgrade it to uh, the retarget the, the, uh, the framework and then everything. Because those are only available ones, then it's going to start working. All right? That's that. Next thing, data validation. How a data is gets, gets validated. Now, we have two types of validation, foolproof validation and data entry validation. What is the difference? Foolproof validation, it means you think the user is sitting behind the keyboard is an idiot. You write the code in a way that no matter what they do, they cannot crash your code. They can start hitting the keyboard like nuts people, and still it will work. Nothing's going to go bad. We don't know how, we're going to teach you how soon, but that's foolproof. The other one is data entry. We think we, that never happens, which means the user, when you're asking the user, please enter your age, user actually enters the age, like put 25, okay? But that value that, come, that comes in is for you, it's important for you. You need to actually check that value to see if it's within certain age and you accept or reject it, okay? The foolproof scenario is that when you ask the person to enter the age, instead of entering 25 as 25, they're going to actually put T-W-E-N-T-Y-F-I-V-E -E and hit enter, okay? Which means something completely, you know, nuts. So <clears throat> how the data entry works, it's pretty simple. Um, essentially, let me just... Uh, Get it from here. Let's say we want to write a code to renew a, a driver's license. If I want to do that, to renew a driver's license, there's an age thingy. So if you are renewing a driver's license, the person must be probably greater than 18 because 16 they can get a driver's license and then two years passes and you renew. Anything earlier than that is impossible, right? So 18 is the minimum thing. And maximum is just to renew with no test or anything. I think it's 75. After 75, you have to actually do certain type of tests to, to make sure that you can actually control and understand where your reflexes are okay uh, when you become a senior, right? So the proper age is between uh, 18 and 75. So what you do first, you get the value. And after you get the value, you have to check to see if the data is correct. Now, if I write an if statement, and I find out the value is wrong and print an error message, there is no guarantee that the user is not going to make the mistake again. Because of that, always loops are happening, uh, are used for, for data validation. So I'll do something like a while, and I'm going to say while age is less than 18, or age is greater than uh, 75, or let's say 75 includes greater than or equal to 75, and then in here, I'm going to print an error message. Say printf invalid age, valid values are between uh, 18 and 75. Okay? And I scan again. I get the exact same thing, and I scan for entry again. And <clears throat> this guarantees, so when it reaches to here, Everything is good. I can continue with whatever I wanted to do. So this is a typical, this is a typical way of doing data entry and checking for validation. 
So essentially from line 5 to line 10, that pack replaces one scanf. Sorry, from 6 to 10. 6 to 10 replaces one scanf to make that scanf proper. Scanf, you can get anything, right? To make sure that scanf gets the proper data, you have to replace one scanf from line 6 to 10. That becomes scanf with validation. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. So if I run this program, what happens is this. If I run this program three years later, um, if I put an age that is invalid, it's going to say invalid between this and that. If I go higher, again, if I enter a proper thing, then everything's good. All right? So it won't let the user go until it's fine. But again, this is not foolproof. If your user says 10, this is what happens. Okay? And it crashes. So this, we're going to find out how to fix. Not now. Okay? This is something that we're going to learn the next day you're coming in. Next thing, there is a mechanism in, in, in C compiler. The codes that you see from 7 to 17, that's C language you are writing. Okay? Code you see at line 1 and 2, that's not C language. That's instructions to C compiler before compilation. You're essentially telling to compiler to do few things before compilation begins. Now, the first defined statement you over there, you see, it's way too rich for our, for our blood to understand what it is. But defined statement has many different aspects. The aspect that is good for us to know is search and replace. It, did it ever happen to you that you are writing a, a letter to John, and you go through everything, and then you find that, oops, it's a Jane? And then what you do, you re search for all the Johns and replace it with Jane and search all the, I don't know, she's, and re I said he's and then replace it with she, right? I said John to Jane, right? Something like that. So you do a search and replace. We can ask compiler to do that for us. I can actually tell the compiler, hey, search for R minimum age, min age, and replace it with 18. Okay? And any place I want minimum age, I replace it with that value. So this is that one. I'm going to go percent D, and in here I'm going to put minimum age. And I can do the exact same thing with other things, like define maximum age. And I'm going to put over here 75. And I'm going to replace all the 75s I had with maximum age. This doesn't mean that I have to do it after programming. Actually, you have to start programming that way. Why? Right now, you are writing this program for Ministry of Transportation. Ten years passes, people become more... I don't know, whatever, and they say, okay, from now on, we're going to start issuing licenses after 17, okay, not 18. And they're going to come back to you and say, could you please fix your program? Your program goes 18. We want it to start from 17. Now, if you don't do that, you have to start hacking your own code because seven years, 10 years after you wrote the program, it's as if someone else wrote it. You have no idea what you have done. So you have to go look for every single 17 that you have or 18 that you have. Hopefully that's the 18 that you want and it's not something else. And then try to fix your code. But using this, you simply go at the beginning, you make that 1817. And because it searches for min age through your code and replaces it, all the code gets updated in an instant. And you charge them $10,000 for that. All right? So that's a good thing to do. All right? So remember. Things that are common and you're going to use over and over and over. They are things that changes, but not often. Minimum age over here is not something that you can ask the user every single time. Ask the person that the, the person sitting at the thing, what is the minimum legal age to do? It's a, it's a standard thing. It's not going to change, right? It may change in 15 years, but now, now. Those things are done this way. It's literally a search and replace. What do I mean by that? What I mean is this. 
Let me pause the recording for a second. Remind me to restart it. Okay, so when I compile this code, it works perfectly exactly like before. I'm not going to go through it. You know that. But let's say over here I put X, Y, Z. Okay? What's going to happen if I put X, Y, Z over here? It's going to replace all min age with X, Y, Z, right? Therefore, when I compile this code, it's going to give me a message telling me that at this line, X, Y, Z, it says X, Y, Z is an identifier, X, Y, Z is undefined. You see that? There is no X, Y, Z here. It's min age. So when compiler gives you an error and you look at that line, you see it says X, Y, Z is an error. And you look at it, there is no X, Y, Z. Immediately you have to think, oh, maybe something is defined. Because when it compiles, there is no min age. It's all been replaced. And X, Y, Z is instead all over there. So the error message that you get will be on what is replaced. Again, remember, the values you see up there, they are not C language. They are setting the compiler to do things before compilation in C language. It's the language of C compiler, not the C language itself. Okay? I see lots of people write define min age equals to something semicolon. No, there is no rule of thing over here. These rules, the rule of comp uh, the compiler uh, uh, instructions are completely different with C language. So what you see over there is exactly what it means. It means search for min age, replace with that. So I'm going to ch change that back to 18. Any questions on this one? Yes. You mean in here? Actually put 18 in here? Or oh, having a variable for it? Oh, yeah. There is a, another way of doing this. Like, they do this too. They write const int min age. Age set to 18. And they don't write a defined statement anymore. Okay? They say, I'm going to create, and as you see, the variable is created outside of the main. So it becomes a global variable, they call it. It's visible to everything. Anything you write over here will see that. And because it's a constant value, it cannot change. So there is a debate which one is good. They both work. Again, there's not one way to do something. Okay? But we have to teach them both, right? So the constant thingy, you'll learn later. You ask for it, I explain. But for now, it's the fine statement that we are going to do. But of course, if I put a variable in here, that's bad. Why? Because this is the scope of that variable. Now you are writing one function. When you actually write a professional program for Ministry of Transportation, there are going to be 500 files, and each file has got to be 3,000 lines of code. Then your minimum age is going to be only visible to this scope, where the find statement looks through the whole file. It doesn't care what is the syntax or anything. It's literally a search and replace. It searches for these values and replaces it with whatever you have. Okay? And that's why constants work too. All right? But for now, let's stick to the find. All right? I'm just going to, I'm going to completely remove that, not leave it on my code. Yes? If uh, the find is uh, for a compiler, what's constant and that's, see, see, that the beautiful thing. So there are two ways of doing that. Use C language to write easily modifiable code or use C compiler to use easily modifiable code. To write easily modifiable code using compiler instructions, use define. To use C language to write easily modifiable code, you write const. It's essentially doing the same thing in two different ways. And there is not only two different ways. There are 500 different ways to do the same thing in any language. Now you know two of them. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. So that's that. I'm kind of filling the blanks. So um, should I leave that over there? Uh, I'm going to use the find and just going to remove that. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to comment it. You know what's going on, right? 
You're going to listen to the thing, hopefully. Uh, or this one. All right. That's that. The next thing I wanted to talk about <clears throat> was, again, this replaces the one action of getting H. If you want several H for exa ages, for example, to find uh, minimum and maximum, let's say, I want to find out. I want to find out what is the the the, the minimum age of an applicant to get uh, to apply for a, for a, for renewing driver's license today. I want to find that out, right? If I want to do that, I have to re get keep getting the age over and over, right? So this values that you see over here, this thing will go inside another loop. So now I got to have over here uh, the fine. Num, and I'm going to put over here 20 or 10. Let's say I want to go through 10 customers and see what do we have. I'm going to have over here integer CNT. And I'm going to do 4 CNT set to 0, CNT less than num, CNT plus plus. And now I'm going to put the whole thing inside a loop. So these, the action of data entry is going to get repeated. This is called a nested loop. When you have a loop inside a loop, OK? But because this loop's purpose is validation, it's essentially data entry. So you are putting the data entry in a loop. Always look at it that way. That's how things get complicated. When you look at one procedure and you know what is its purpose, then it's become simple, right? So now if I want to find minimum or maximum, what do I do? I'm going to have int. This is stand. This is one of the ways to find minimum and maximums. And I'm going to tell you how it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to say lowest age. And I'm going to int highest age. Then by default, you start those values with impossible values. You put something that is impossible to happen. What is the impossible value for lowest age? It's maximum age, right? So I'm going to set it to that one. What is the impossible value for highest age? That's the minimum age, right? So I'm going to be setting the highest age to minimum and lowest age to maximum, something impossible. Then while data entry is happening, I'm going to check for this to be valid. So I'm going to say if the age that you just entered is less than lowest age, then lowest age is not lowest age anymore, right? The data that you just entered is lowest that than the lowest value. So I'll update it. I'm going to say lowest age is set to age. I'll do the exact same thing with maximum. If the age that you just entered is higher than maximum age, oh, not that one, highest age, then your highest age is not highest age anymore. You have to update it. So I'm going to say highest age is set to age. Now, by doing this at the end, I can actually mention whoop, control V. <clears throat> Youngest applicant was this many old years old, and the oldest applicant was that many years old with highest stage and lowest stage. So I can actually go. So it was just an example to show you how nesting happens, which means as things go complicated, you have tasks happening in certain blocks, and those will go into belly of other blocks to get repeated or checked or things like that. All right? And this is the standard way of doing a lowest uh, finding high, minimum and maximum. Does anybody want me to walk through this and see how it actually works? Yep, OK. So <clears throat> for now, I'm going to go with 5. So I'm, I'm going to change this 10 to 5. I don't want to do too many. OK, so let's run the program. 
and bring it over here. Execution goes over there. Let's make this a little bigger. All right. <clears throat> so lowest age becomes 75 and highest age becomes 18, which is impossible. Then I'll come over here. I'll get the age. I validated. I don't want to go through the validation. So I'm going to put over here 40 and hit enter. So the age that I'm receiving is 40. Then it comes over here. Is 40 less than lower, your lower age? Is age 40 less than lower age? No. So lowest age becomes 40. See, age is less than 75. 40 is not less than 75. Because it's, it is, so it updates it. So now lowest age is 40. Is age 40 greater than highest age that is 80? 18? Yes. So now they are both 40. Correct? Now we're going to go back up. Get the next value. Now the user is going to enter, say, 21. Hit enter. 21 is entered. Is 21 less than 40? Yes, it is. So 40 is not lowest stage anymore. It's going to get updated to 21. Is 21 less than 40? Uh, greater than 40? No, it's not. Because it's not, there is no update needed. The highest age is still 40. And it keeps going like that. So when I come down to here, <clears throat> oh, oh, sorry. So when I come down to here, let's execute it. The next thing, if I go 50, then it's going to update that one. If I go 19, it's going to update to 21. If I go 70, it's going to update that one. And finally, at the end, we'll see that the highest age will be 70 and the lowest age will be 19. And voila, lowest, lowest and highest are found. Okay? Be good girls and boys and walk through this at home. Okay? Do you want me to demonstrate a walkthrough to see how it's done on paper? Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to record that because unless anybody has a video who wants to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop this. Make this a little smaller so we can see. I wanted to demonstrate walkthroughs when, I, when we start our first function, but now, oh, let me, let me uh, pause.